So again, we've we've talked a lot about um, Asian hate, right? Uh, a lot of hate towards Asian Americans, and we and we saw the height of it was in the Atlanta shootings. What happened with Atlanta, and it was unfortunate. But the violence against Asian Americans has been happening for a long time, and and I talked about how the the now militaristic attacks towards China. Um, are just going to perpetuate that level of Asian hate. You know, before under Trump, it was, oh, he said China virus and he's got a trade war with China. Oh, this is this is so bad. It's so evil. He's so racist. He's so mean. And now now Biden um, wants to <laughs> engage in military warfare. Right. He's ramping up military aggression towards China, which would be a fucking disaster. But this has been going on for a really, really, really long time. Uh, and it just isn't really talked about. So the media has now been been nonstop talking about this. Stop stop Asian hate. You know, it's become a hashtag. Uh, you know, I, I use the hashtag to get people to fucking pay attention. Uh, but the media stopped talking about it after the whole China virus. Like Trump said, oh, it's China virus. Oh, you know, and then everybody's like, can you believe the racism? Oh, G oh, gee willikers, you know, and they talked about it for a week and then they moved on to something else. And then we never heard about increased Asian violence or increased violence towards Asian people in this country at all. Until until Atlanta happened, which was six, I believe it was six, um, six. um spas that were run by asian americans uh that this person went in and killed people i think he killed eight people and then he said quote i'm having a bad day boy fuck if that's a bad day i don't even want to know what your good day looks like shit holy fuck is a good day just stabbing a rabbit what the fuck holy hell like and then of course he murdered people Cops take him in alive because he's a white dude, right? And then they make this excuse, oh, it's, you know, he just said it was it was about his sex addiction, which we'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, media kind of went became silent because Trump wasn't involved in that level of racism. And if they can make all of the racism uh, connected to Trump and only Trump, it's almost like they're erasing the history of racism in America and making it all about like, oh man, Trump invented this. Did you guys remember when Trump invented racism in 2016? Holy shit. You know, that's the way that they frame it. Um, but there's decades of, of, um, of U.S. imperialism that has perpetuated this hate towards Asian Americans. Again, the, the various avenues of media are responsible for this, right? But U.S. imperialism itself is responsible for it as well, because, you know, we'll 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 do racism uh, or rather not racism. Why am I forgetting this word? Uh, the railroads aside. Right. But the railroads were a very that that that, that stereotype is still stuck around, um, you know, that, that the railroad companies used a Asian American, uh, Asian labor specifically. Uh, but then you had. Uh, you had the the Korean War, right? Before the Korean War, you had Japanese internment camps, right? So because because Japan was being led by a authoritarian dictator, that means that all Japanese people are authoritarian dictators, which means that we have to demonize Jap Japanese people. Oh, they might be sleeper agents. Uh, you can't trust anybody that looks um, even vaguely Asian because how does the average person know the difference between an Asian person, a Japanese person, a Chinese person, a Vietnamese person, a Korean person? Oh, they, they don't know that. They don't know the subtleties between the, 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 the different countries, right? So they just put everybody in internment camps. And this was under a Democratic leader, by the way, uh, arguably one of the most uh, you know beloved Democratic leaders of the 20th century, who had his own bevy of problems. Right. FDR. And then we went to Vietnam. Illegally, illegally. So now all Asian Americans were communists. So they went from internment camps. We're going to we're going to camp up all the Japanese citizens. To the Korean War, which just perpetuated that hate because they're the enemy to the Vietnam War, which then accelerated that perpetuated hate 
even further because the Vietnamese are the enemy and they're communists. So they're here to steal your freedom. So if you see an a a Asian person, that means that they're here to steal your freedom. That's what that Vietnam War did. Right. And then now, as the cycle is perpetuated, we have a bunch of stereotypes of, about the Asian community. And not just that, but it escalated to Trump's trade war with China, right? It was all, oh, well, China's stealing our jobs. Oh, China's taking away our industry. China's doing this. China's doing that. Meanwhile, fucking every, like I have a MacBook Pro, which I know was made by uh, basically Chinese slave labor. People fucking jumping out of Foxconn, the company that makes Apple products, and they have to have suicide nets in place. You know, corporations can go and use use cheap Chinese labor, but oh boy, they're here. They're stealing American jobs and freedoms. That perpetuates Chinese hate, right? And and here's the thing: is that is a bipartisan narrative. That's a bipartisan narrative. I've heard Democrats and Republicans say this shit. But now we have this militarized aggression that's that's going on towards China, and ev and every time you turn on the media. You know, they talk about, oh, how uh, the Chinese menace. Oh, the Chi the Chinese are coming. Oh, they're taking over. You know, they're doing this. They're doing that. And that's going to perpetuate the the hatred towards Asian Americans. It's very similar to the way that 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 the uh, the Gulf and Iraq war was to brown people. It didn't that nobody knew the differences between somebody from Iraq and somebody from India and somebody from Pakistan somebody from afghanistan it was all just shades of brown and we were and and you know the military is saying we're attacking brown people in the middle east so that perpetuated hate towards them because that's the enemy that's the narrative that they choose right they choose that this is the enemy narrative and this level of hate i, I just you know again it goes all the way to the 1800s when they were just Chinese laborers working on the railroad for pittance. And these laborers were chosen because, uh, you know, the, the railroad company can probably pay them a cheaper wage than the unionized American workers. And then the American workers were sold a bill of goods saying that, oh, well, they stole your job by underbidding you, causing that conflict within the working class. All the way to that, all the way to now. We just kind of went through that. It's the same thing with for brown people. It's the same thing for black people. U.S. imperialism did that. The wars we waged by making these people the enemy did that. When, when hatred on that level is permeated a society so much, it's really, really hard to get rid of. And when media sends you mixed messages, because look, I'm trying to think of a positive Asian American in media right now. I don't watch a shit ton of TV, but from the television shows that I have watched, I can't really think of a positive Asian American influence. Maybe lost, maybe lost. Honestly, like one of the most positive portrayals of Asian American culture is in the Avatar series, not the fucking movie. I'm talking about the animated series. And it has a lot of Eastern philosophies in there. It has a lot of Asian philosophies in there. Uh, and it does a really good job of portraying all that stuff. Positively. Other than that, you know, a lot of the other ones are like, like I even think of like rush hour. Clearly that the the a lot of the humor is based on a language barrier between Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. But even then it was like the jokes were about the fact that he was a Chinese immigrant that didn't understand English. This is how much the culture of low hanging fruit stereotypes. And it's okay to be hostile towards this group of people because they're jokes anyway, has permeated American culture. And now the media is sending mixed messages because they're like, oh, U.S. imperialism says we need to increase military aggression towards this country, making Chinese people the enemy. But we have to stop Asian hate, which that's a mixed message. You're just trying to look good 
so that people don't fucking stop tuning into your racist neoliberal bullshit. Your 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 manufactured consent for war. So you're like, oh, we'll stop Asian hate, but also Asians are the enemy. Because all North Koreans are evil and because all Chinese people are evil. Because that's how that's how the war machine frames them. It's just wildly fucking hypocritical. So if you want to really stop Asian hate, then push back against U.S. imperialism. Push back against this, uh, this increased military aggression towards China. Push back against a lot of the narratives that you see in pop culture. Even, uh, you, you know, we talked about Star Trek earlier. Even in Star Trek, the most positive Asian American character is Harry Kim. And the joke around Harry Kim is that that poor dude is an ensign for seven fucking years. He goes through hell and back and he's still an ensign at the end of the show. And then when he becomes a captain, this is major spoilers for a show that's been out for a very long time. Just heads up. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a future where he becomes a captain Captain Janeway goes back and erases it. Just like, I don't know if he became a captain or not. I don't know if he got promoted afterwards. They never fucking address it. I would love it if the Star Wars franchise addressed whether Harry Kim got a promotion ever at all. Right? Like, even the most positive Asian American character remains to be the lowest rank person on the, on the cast. Right? He's a bridge officer, which is kind of a big deal. Uh, but like, you can't promote that dude to to just Lieutenant Season 4. Lieutenant Kim. That would have been fucking awesome. <laughs> they hamstrung him. That's what I mean. If you want to really, if you really want to stop Asian hate, push back against corporate media narratives. Push back against your U.S. imperialism. I'm not saying everything Trump did was great because because a majority of, of it was shit, but he did open peace talks to North Korea. Shouldn't you want that? But it doesn't serve U.S. imperialism unless there's a culture of war surrounding it. If there's a threat in the Pacific, that means we get to put more military bases and sell more weapons. So if if a few Asian people have to die along the way in America because of people that you know, listen to this sort of narrative. And then we excuse it by saying, oh, he's a sex addict and he was he was really going against the depravity in these places. No, sex addiction doesn't lead to violence. That's a very specific thing. He targeted six Asian owned and run spas in Atlanta. He wasn't having a bad day. He was having a racist day. He was having a murderous day. Stop making excuses for these people and stop making excuses for the media that perpetuates this level of hypocrisy and stop making excuses for fucking U.S. imperialism. Let's look at a few comments. Uh, got back to the Chinese in the 1800s. Yeah, absolutely. Japanese internment camp. Yellow peril. I don't think I've heard that term before. I'm going to have to look that up. That's a, that's a new one. I wonder where that was from and what the origins of that were. So I haven't seen that one. Uh, John McCain made some comments about Vietnam. I haven't heard those comments either. Uh, if you have a link or if you know what the comment that he left was, Holly, leave a comment because I'm, I'm curious to know what it is. And, you know, yeah, the you all look alike thing. Yeah, that's a major stereotype towards Asian, uh, Asian Americans. Uh, but again, it's like, how do people really know uh, the subtle differences in the way Chinese people and Koreans and Japanese people and Vietnamese people and, and all these people look because that's not really encouraged. Getting to learn the intricacies of a culture is not really encouraged. What is encouraged, and, and this is both liberals and conservatives, because I've I told you I face some weirdly racist comments from liberals, uh, and then they excuse it by going, oh, it's just a joke, just like the fucking conservatives do, right? Oh, don't get so offended, you snowflake. It's just a joke, right? It's the same shit. Well, you're not learning enough about the culture anyway. 
right? So if you really want to stop Asian hate, maybe you should stop the low-hanging fruit jokes. I forgot Sulu. Oh, I forgot Sulu. Oh, man, you're absolutely right. Uh, I forgot TOS. TOS has uh, 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 Sulu, and I totally forgot. Uh, and I also forgot, like, how jacked he is in that show. <laughs> Uh, but you're right. And, and he's an underdeveloped character on that show too. There was a lot of focus on, on bones. There was a lot of focus obviously on captain Kirk, uh, and Spock, but there wasn't really a lot of character development for Sulu. There wasn't really a, a lot of character develop for, uh, for Chekhov or, um, I forget a horror, right. Uh, you know, and, and again, they, they could have done a better job, of that and it, and later in the later in the series though you do get to see that Sulu has become a captain of his own ship and he is just as good of a captain if not better than Kirk uh he stands up to the Klingons uh in a in a badass way as Kirk does too so you do get to see later on he gets uh a more of a character arc through kind of the mythos of the Enterprise crew um but during the show yeah you're right he does not get enough credit um as uh as a character and and again you know even ds9 as much as i love ds9 and as much as i love next generation there wasn't really a lot of asian american representation there wasn't really a lot of brown representation you know dr bashir is the closest thing that i get to someone that looks like me represented in the world of star trek uh, so as as open-minded and progressive as that show is it unfortunately has to uh follow the rules of the media of our time which means that the representation is there but it's not as um uh, as diverse as it could have been if that makes sense uh and i haven't watched discovery yet i i've been meaning to uh i've been trying to get uh my girlfriend into watching picard with me because i really enjoyed picard uh but i know i know discovery has a lot more of a diverse cast uh, than than the other shows did uh, but good, good, good note in bringing up Sulu there because I definitely forgot about <laughs> Sulu. Thank you, Holly. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.